Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Hard to see UK benefiting from leaving European Union. David Cameron accused over dubious European Union partners. EU policymakers looking to boost energy savings target sources. And the EU's mood, a country by country tour. Plus, the European Union. No thank you, not for the time being. It's Monday, the 9th of June. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, top story from our homepage, it's hard to see the UK benefiting from leaving the European Union. President Barack Obama said Thursday that it's hard to see how Britain would benefit by leaving the European Union and that it would have an enormous impact on its economic and political life. Britain must make its own choice, Obama said, but insisted that it's always an asset for the United States to know one of its closest allies has a seat at the table in the larger European project. Obama spoke at a joint news conference with British Prime Minister David Cameron in Brussels after the G7 summit. Now, the article on our website has the full details, but as you'll see, particularly as we run out towards the Scottish referendum, Big Cheese Dave Cameroni might have a seat at the table, but it's impotent and without a voice. David Cameron accused over dubious European Union partners. David Cameron was accused on Wednesday of forming an alliance with dubious partners in the EU after the Tories joined forces with two controversial parties in the European Parliament. The Prime Minister came under fire after members of the European Conservatives and Reformists group in the European Parliament voted to admit the Danish People's Party and the True Finns. Now, the move means the ECR group founded after Cameron broke with the main centre-right EPPED group now has 55 MEPs and could soon be the Parliament's fourth largest pan-European group. Now, not that any of the tribal groupings makes one jot of difference, of course. They might as well be forging alliances for a crocheting group. Watch this space for our live table talk show where we uncover the massive transfer of national power under qualified majority voting system. And of course, check out the articles online. EU policymakers looking to boost energy savings target sources. EU policymakers are considering a goal to increase European Union energy efficiency between 30 and 35 percent by 2030 as part of efforts to cut greenhouse emissions, reduce fuel bills and improve energy security. Now, this is an interesting report. Of particular note is the shifting of the time frame. You check back at the old articles on our website, it reveals that the EU was ascribing its targets to 2020. Now that's suddenly taken a shift to 2030. Come on, EU propaganda folks, you'll need to be cleverer than that to catch the team at the unit out. <laughs> EU's mood, a country by country tour. The latest survey results from seven European countries reveal a wide range of views across the region about the economy, the future and the EU itself. Now, the British economy was particularly hard hit by the economic crisis in 2009 and the economy shrunk by 5.2 percent. But in 2014, the economy is now expected to expand by 2.9 percent. The article details opinion polls and cites economic statistics and provides good background details about the state of the nations. 1. The European Union? No thank you, not for the time being. Well, it looks like Turkey has hopped it from the EU's basting dish. As former Turkish diplomat who worked tirelessly for his country to join the European Union at some point, I do not take pleasure in saying that this ambitious federal project is not going anywhere. After all, it may not be worth becoming a member in the foreseeable future of this exclusive club. What's viewed as a golden prize for candidate countries, the Turkish diplomat said. Well, with nationalist influence growing rapidly, little political support and the ongoing ignorance of the European federalist elite, the EU project looks to be in a bit of a mess.
Now, you may have noticed that the pace has quickened for the nightly news. We are responding to your requests to be more succinct and rapid fire in delivering the stories. Now, I shall be looking to cover a summary overview of the key stories for the day, and you'll notice that we're cutting straight to the stories one after another. Now, we'll have our usual introductory and outro sections, but we've axed the intro scene and the outro credits. The target is to get each show to no more than 4 minutes 59 seconds maximum. We're also tightening up the daily email newsletter in the same way, so please take a look for the next few episodes and then write in and tell us what you think. Hints, tips, ideas, critique on things to improve upon are most welcome. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>